Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to teach you how to potentially reverse hyperthyroidism or Graves' disease. So one of the first triggers or causes of uh, most cases of hyperthyroidism, I'd say over 80%, is food intolerances. And what a lot of people will find is when they remove dairy especially, especially dairy, but also gluten as well, they experience significant declines in their symptoms of overactive thyroid. The theory behind this is when you consume a potential food allergen or an intolerance, what happens is like for example, um, A1 casein protein found in milk, found in dairy. Uh, a lot of people are allergic to this and when they consume it, the body starts to attack the thyroid on accident instead of actually attacking the protein in the dairy that they're actually allergic to to begin with. And so this can set off an autoimmune reaction, which is partly why, you know, they all a lot of people claim that Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism is an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks the thyroid. So that's part of the theory behind it. And um the fact is, a lot of people who remove dairy from their diet, they experience remission in their hyperthyroidism. It doesn't mean every case of hyperthyroidism is caused by dairy allergies or dairy intolerance. It just means you should probably try it if you have hyperthyroidism, and a lot of people do experience remission. So food intolerances, take care of those. Um, second on the list would be uh, nutrient deficiencies. Uh, if you are deficient in vitamin E, if you're deficient in selenium, if you're deficient in iodine, you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy surrounding iodine. People think that iodine is going to hurt the thyroid, but, you know, it's going to exa exaggerate the symptoms of hyperthyroidism and make thyroid even more overactive, but the fact is iodine is essential for proper thyroid function and balance, and that can go either way. Most people are not getting enough iodine, just by default. It would be insane to think that someone who has hyperthyroidism, who's not paying attention to diet, and who's not consuming kelp or another concentrated form of iodine, um, it would be insane to think that they have too much iodine, and if they start to consume iodine in its natural state, such as kelp, that is going to make the symptoms worse. I've heard a lot of doctors say that, yeah, just consume your daily recommended amount of iodine in the form of kelp, and you should be okay, even if you do have hyperthyroidism. Uh, but nutrient deficiencies, uh, even a uh, salt deficiency, potassium, magnesium, uh, vitamin K2, vitamin D, uh, the reasoning behind this is, uh, well, minerals and electrolytes are extremely essential not only for adrenal health but also for thyroid health. And when you have an imbalance of electrolytes and minerals such as magnesium, calcium, etc., uh, your entire body chemistry goes haywire and goes whack. So, very, very essential. Um, you know, the thyroid is a master gland, and once the thyroid is out of balance, your pituitary gland is out of balance, your adrenal glands go out of balance, the entire, all the processes of the body are going to be completely fucked. So, um, make sure you're getting all your, at least all your recommended daily amounts of nutrients and uh, address nutrient deficiencies, vitamin E as well. So the third uh, major factor in causation uh, for hyperthyroidism would be infections. This one's going to be a lot trickier because, number one, a lot of people have infections and they're not even aware of it. They, there's no symptoms or they're not sure that their diseases are actually caused by an infection. Um, the doctors do a good job of, you know, slapping a, a diagnosis on symptoms without actually addressing the potential root causes such as infection a lot of things uh, you know for example Lyme disease 
<laughs> can be a uh, cause of a lot of different conditions and syndromes. Uh, so as far as infections for hyperthyroidism, I mean, it could be a number of different things, but for one, parasites, and a lot of people, they're kind of like easy, uh, uneasy talking about parasites, and they're like, oh, you know, they think that it's fake, but even the CDC themselves say that over 85% of Americans actually uh, have parasitical infections and don't even know it. Um, and I think that's because they don't realize, you know, their chronic illness is actually caused, or actually symptoms of parasitical infections. So for parasitical infections, of course, what you want to do is get a tincture of uh, wormwood, wormwood, worm, wood, <laughs> uh, with black walnut hull and clove. And you want to take uh, like a dropper full of that tincture every three hours until um, over the course of time your symptoms start to get better. You'll probably notice your and when you take a crap, you're going to be crapping out parasites or weird looking objects. Uh, very nasty stuff, but it's essential for parasitical infections. Now, if it's an infection of another kind, you know, whatever pathogen it could be, uh, you could use garlic. You could also continue taking, you can take clove. Um, you can consume about two to six tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Uh, with warm water before meals. Uh, I feel like this is effective for flushing out the system, including the lymph system. I've cured chronic infections and uh, swollen lymph nodes with apple cider vinegar. Uh, but it has to be raw and pasteurized and unfiltered apple cider vinegar, otherwise it wouldn't work. Um, and there's a lot of other strategies to get rid of infections, but it all depends on what kind of infection it is. You know, and even if it, you know it's like, oh, it's a bacterial infection, well, what kind of bacterial infection? Bacterial infections are easier, but if it's a fungal infection, if it is, you know, parasites, those are more complicated because there's different remedies for different parasites. So, but just as a rundown, these are all the top three causes, um, among other things. And, you know, just as a bonus, a couple other potential triggers could be stress, adrenal problems. Uh, hormonal issues, if you have high estrogen levels, um, you know, insulin, cortisol. So, you know, taking adaptogens such as, uh, believe it or not, maca root, ashwagandha. As a matter of fact, ashwagandha is a great tonic for the thyroid. A lot of people are scared of taking it because they're afraid it might speed up their thyroid if they already have hyperthyroidism but there's a lot of case studies that show ashwagandha has actually been effective in reversing hyperthyroid. Um, maca root, on the other hand, might speed it up. Um, but then you have uh, Siberian ginseng, you have Asian ginseng, American ginseng. I think American ginseng is great for uh, kind of calming down the body. Um, and there's a new, numerous others, rhodiola, I could, I could go on, but you kind of just have to experiment with those and see which ones help and which ones hurt. In my experience, ashwagandha has been really effective at calming down the nervous system and uh, helping to calm down what I suspected was hyperthyroidism, um, as a matter of fact. So this has just been kind of like a short video. So uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe for more uh, daily, weekly, and monthly videos. And uh, check out my Facebook page, Wolfgang B. Lozana, Holistic Medicine. And I'll talk to you soon.